Have you ever looked at your Lumen renders and thought, how can I make this look better? You're not alone and I'm here to help. Hey, what's up guys, Nunu here. In this video, I'll share 11 simple tips to make your renders look more realistic and professional. Let's jump in. And the number one is lighting. Lighting can make or break a render. Imagine walking into a beautiful design room. If the lighting isn't right, the entire mood changes. The same applies to your renders. Lighting is a powerful way to show emotions. It sets the atmosphere, changes the mood and adds depth to your image. That's why it's so important to plan your lighting carefully when creating a render. We are used to seeing light and how it behaves in real life from the moment we are born. Depending on the time of day, the light can change the scene and the impact it makes. We have two ways of using light in Lumion. Using real skies or using sun together with sky and clouds. We have at least four main light modes we can use. Midday, overcast, golden hour and blue hour. The midday happens when the sun is at its highest point in the sky, often used for clear, vibrant and energetic scenes. Shadows are short and sharp and it was avoided by photographers, but lately more and more people are using it. You can get really nice results with that deep blue sky. There's a tab called Clear in Lumion's Real Skies. Any of these skies will work great for this. Don't forget to control the sky brightness. As the name says, the brighter the value, the more light from the sky you will have on your scene. For best results, I recommend control these values together with the exposure under the color correction effect. Next, we have the overcast mode. This is a diffused soft light with no direct sunlight, perfect for even and lit, neutral or calm scenes. It works really well when you have a stormy sky with the sun just peeking through the clouds, highlighting a part of your design. In Lumion, you can find a tab called Overcast with lots of different overcast skies to choose from. Now, golden hour is the best time of day for photographers to shoot. It's the warm, soft light right after sunrise or before sunset. Creates a romantic, magical or calm mood where shadows are long and soft. You have a big variety from a clear sunset to a strong reddish sun. Next, we have the blue hour. This is the cool, dim light just before sunrise or after sunset. Perfect for creating a calm, mysterious or dramatic mood. You can find these skies on the tab Evening on the Real Skies effect. I recommend having the temperature values on the color correction effect left at default. If you increase too much the temperature, it will remove that blue tint from your scene, which will break the evening effect. You can pair it with warm interior lighting for the most beautiful effects. You need to experiment and see which lighting highlights your project better. And I forgot to mention something important. Always remember that you should keep one side of the facade in shadow to create better contrast and give some dimension to your project. Number two, materials. Materials are the key to making your renders look real. Imagine you need to show a concrete wall in your render, but it looks shiny and plastic. It instantly breaks the illusion, right? That's why PBI materials are so important. They give you control over texture, reflection and bump maps. So you can recreate real surfaces like wood, stone or glass. But even with PBR, some renders still don't feel right. The materials can look too perfect or might not match the lighting in your scene. Here's how to fix it. First, adjust the glossiness and reflection sliders in Lumion's Material Editor until the surface looks good. Then add some weathering to introduce imperfections like scratches, dirt or wear. Don't forget to add round corners to your materials. This subtle tweak can soften sharp edges and create beautiful highlights that make materials feel more realistic. For the best results, check out material libraries like Polygon.com for high-quality PBR textures. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide to master your materials, check out my video linked up there. I break down advanced techniques to make PBR materials in Lumion. Number three is Real Skies. Skies can really help you sell realism in a render. You don't want a stunning design to be spoiled by a terrible sky. So that's where Real Skies can help you. In Lumion, this feature gives you a 360 degree image, which essentially paints the lighting and colors onto the environment. 
So whether it's a bright sunny day or a stunning sunset with pink hues, the real sky image will reflect colors accurately on your scene. This will make it closer to real life. But what if the perfect sky for your scene isn't available in Lumion? Here's the solution. You can import custom HRI skies from websites like Polyhaven. This site offers free, high-quality HRIs to match the mood you want, whether it's a bright sunrise or a dramatic storm. When you use sunset skies in Lumion, they often create deep blue tones, known as the blue hour mood. You can make it even better by adding warm interior lighting for a nice contrast. This works well because blue and yellow are complementary colors. Take your time to experiment with sky and lighting combinations. A good sky becomes part of the story you are telling in your render. And next is focal length. Focal length is another secret weapon for storytelling in renders. Think of it like choosing the right lens for a camera. A wide-angle lens works wonders for interiors, capturing the entire space in one frame. For exterior shots or close-up details, using a 50mm lens gives realistic proportions and makes elements look more natural. But wide-angle shots can distort your scene. They stretch objects and make vertical lines look uneven. To fix this, use Lumens 2-point perspective to straighten those vertical lines and correct distortions. If you want to take it a step further, you can add subtle effects like chromatic aberrations, uh, vignetting, depth of field or bloom. These imperfections mimic real-world cameras, creating that cinematic quality that makes your render feel alive. But be careful and don't overuse these effects. This can make your renders look artificial and overdone. The key is balance. Treat effects like seasoning a dish. You want just enough to enhance the flavor. Try different focal lengths to guide the eye. Use a wide lens to make small spaces feel larger and a tighter lens to highlight details in your scene. And if you want to take your Lumion skills to the next level, check out my new Lumion Render course, where I share advanced techniques to help you create photorealistic architectural visualizations. Whether you are a beginner or looking to refine your craft, this course has everything you need to elevate your renders. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. And number five, post-processing. Lumion has a color correction effect that lets you do all the post-processing right in the software. You don't need extra programs like Photoshop or GIMP. And did you know that after making your render preview, you can control all the settings inside the color correction without the need to make a new render? If you learned something new, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more of my videos. As you can see, you can control the exposure, the highlights, even the saturation or color temperature, all without leaving Lumion. And by the way, I have heard from many of my students that they have tight deadlines and can't afford to spend time rendering multiple images and then going to Photoshop for post-processing. That's why they prefer post-processing tools within Lumion to enhance their renders directly in the software. And by the way, if you haven't tried out Lumion yet, you can download the free trial to test it. And Lumion Pro is completely free for students across the world. So if you are a student, you can check the link in the description below. And next is correct real-world scale. Scale is one of those tiny details that can completely change your scene. When it's wrong, trees, furniture and people stand out in a bad way. When it's right, everything looks like it belongs with the architecture. Check the dimensions in your modeling software before importing to Lumion. It's a small step that can save you a lot of time and frustration. Use reference objects like a person or a car to quickly see if everything is the right size. This simple step can help you avoid fixing an entire scene later because of scale problems. If you import a model at the wrong scale, it ruins the whole scene. A chair might look too big, a tree might look like it's from a fantasy world. And speaking of your models, the next tip is optimize your model. We've all had this problem. Your scene starts lagging or even crashes because the model is too heavy. It's annoying and slows down your work. Before importing, optimize your model. Remove extra geometry and apply materials in your modeling software, like SketchUp, 3ds Max or Revit. If your scene is still running slow, Lumion has a helpful feature, proxies. Proxies replace detailed objects with simple outlines, making your scene easier to work with, especially in large projects. 
And here's a tip for SketchUp users. Use Lumen's Live Sync feature. It lets you model in SketchUp and see updates instantly in Lumion. This saves time because you don't need to keep importing and exporting. Next is people and vehicles. Adding people and cars to your scene can make it feel alive and dynamic. A well-placed asset adds context and scale, making your design more relatable. But have you ever seen renders where people or cars look out of place? Overcrowding or awkward positioning can ruin the scene and make it feel fake, especially if a 3D person is staring straight into the camera. To fix this, place 3D people facing away from the camera or position it far in the background. This keeps them from standing out too much and avoids that weird, unrealistic look. For cars, placement matters too. They should support the scene, not take over. You should avoid bright colors that will draw immediately your attention. Or if you do use them, make sure they complement the scene's colors. They should fit the scene without being distracting. And if you'd like to know how to create a realistic car animation to be used in Lumion, you can check my video up there. Now, next is weather effects. Here's something you might not know. The precipitation effect in Lumion isn't just for rain or snow. You can use it to add texture and detail to your materials, even when the weather is clear. First, add the precipitation effect, then turn off all settings except for precipitation amount and block bias. Next, adjust the precipitation amount and watch how it changes the look of your materials in the scene. This will help you get some nice results. Use the precipitation effect lightly. These small details help make your materials look more real. And number 10 is storytelling. Your renders tell a story and camera angles are like chapters. Use wide shots to show the whole scene, close-ups to focus on materials and textures and mid-range views to show the design and how the space fits together. Inconsistent camera angles can confuse viewers and ruin your render story. So plan your angles carefully. Use them to guide the viewer's eye and show the most important parts of your design. This makes your story clear and easy to follow. And number 11, scene management. Complex scenes can get messy as you add more details to make them realistic. Handling so many objects can slow down your work and your computer. That's why using layers to organize your scene makes a big difference. Layers help you group items like furniture, plants, and lights into categories. This keeps your project tidy and speeds up your work by letting you turn off heavy elements when you don't need them. With layers, you can focus on one part of the scene without slowing everything down. And that's it. The top 11 tips for amazing renders in Lumion. Which tip did you like most? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to check out this video to see how you can make a handheld camera animation in Lumion. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and hit the bell icon for more tutorials like this. I'll see you in the next video.